there! Welcome back to another What's for Dinner Wednesday. Tonight I'm going to be taking the opportunity to practice a recipe that I'm hoping to share with my family on Christmas. And it's called Funeral Potatoes. And I know you might be thinking, what? Funeral Potatoes? <laughs> what are Funeral Potatoes and why do you want to have them on Christmas? So stay tuned, I'll let you know the story behind this and I'll show you how to make them. The family fudge, the family fudge. They are mostly sweet but full of nuts. Okay, so before we get started, sorry about the voice, guys. I had a cold a few days ago and my voice is still a little raspy. But thank you for all the get well wishes that you guys sent. I really appreciate it. So, Funeral potatoes. That's how I know the recipe, but other people might call it cheesy hash brown potatoes. I've heard that at Cracker Barrel restaurants, they make a really yummy version of this. Unfortunately, we don't have a Cracker Barrel close to where I live, so I can't tell you if that's true or not. But this recipe, like I said, is actually a side dish, not usually the main course, but there are a lot of different ways that you can customize it for your liking. I think it has the name Funeral Potatoes because number one, it is served a lot at funerals, at least the ones that I've been to, and two, it is a comfort food for sure. It's not light on the calories, so a little bit goes a long way. Okay, for my version of Funeral Potatoes, I'm gonna be using a one pound bag of shredded hash brown potatoes. There are no onions in here or anything else, it's just potatoes. And if you'd like to use real potatoes, Feel free, go ahead and do that too. I'm gonna to be using sour cream, some sharp cheddar cheese, Parmesan cheese, half of a medium sized onion, some corn flakes to add a crunchy topping, um, some butter, and I'm going to be using cream of chicken soup. And if you can't find this version of cream of chicken soup, Feel free to go ahead and use Campbell's as well. Okay, so my oven is preheating to 350 degrees. You're also gonna wanna have a nine by 13 baking dish and a large bowl for mixing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to open my bag of hash browns and I'm gonna dump it in. Now to that, I'm going to add my cream of chicken soup. This is condensed soup, and this one is 12 ounces. If you use a can, I believe that the cans are 10 ounces. That would work fine too, it's no big deal. I dump that right on the potatoes. Now I don't, I haven't made this recipe very often, which is why I say I'm practicing, <laughs> practicing this recipe. I've never made it with this condensed um, soup. In the past I've always made my own uh, soup, Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna add is one cup of sour cream. This is uh, two cups, so I'm just gonna eyeball, I'm gonna put half of this in there. That looks like about half. Okay, so my next ingredient is Parmesan cheese. This is a five ounce container and I'm gonna dump in the whole thing. This, these potatoes are gonna be very cheesy. Okay, to this I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt. So yeah, I don't make this recipe very often because it's not very healthy. So one of the reasons I wanted to practice it specifically is to know my salt level, to make sure that it's not gonna be too salty when I'm done. So when this is all done, I'm gonna give it a taste and I will give you my honest opinion whether I think this is too much salt or not enough. With potatoes, you know, they tend to take a lot of salt, but I don't wanna to be too salty either. So now I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. All right, time for more cheese. This is two cups of sharp cheddar cheese and I'm gonna put all of it in there. So now I'm going to grate half of a medium sized onion and put it in there. And then this part is optional, but we actually really like garlic on our potatoes. So I'm gonna crush up three cloves and put it in there as well. So the reason I wanted to grate this onion is for two reasons. Number one, I don't want large chunks of onion in here. And number two, I'm not going to be pre-cooking these before I add them in and I wanna make sure that um, 
I don't have crunchy onions in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grate directly into this bowl. Of course, if you have a food processor, you can definitely use that. This onion is strong. It is getting my eyes and my nose. Whew. So while I'm crushing up my garlic, I'll tell you why I wanted to practice this potato recipe. Last year for Christmas, I was in charge of the potatoes and I decided to make a brand new recipe that I never tried before and it was um, the Pioneer Woman's it was the Pioneer Woman's scalloped potatoes. And it turned out fine, it tasted, it tasted good, but because I had never made it before, I totally underestimated how much time it would take. And so everybody was at my house, ready to eat dinner, but we had to wait for the potatoes. The potatoes were still in the oven and they weren't cooked. So I ended up having to turn the broiler on and get them done faster, which is, was not fun. So this year I want to be prepared. Here goes half of my garlic. So I've seen this recipe made with uh, fresh potatoes, with cubed potatoes, and shredded potatoes. I think all of them are fine. Now I'm going to mix all of this together. And let me tell you, it is important to have a large mixing bowl for this. Otherwise, you're gonna have it spill all over the place. So this recipe looks cool because it's really just dump it all in a bowl, mix it up, about an hour in the oven, and it's done. Huh, look at this. In my bag of shredded potatoes, I found a nub of potatoes. So now I'm gonna dump this into my nine by 13 dish. Okay, I'm gonna pat this down in here. So with these potatoes, you could add some diced up ham to this and make it like a complete dinner. Maybe serve some green beans on the side. That sounds delicious. So it definitely could be made into a full meal, but generally it's a side dish. All right, on to the cornflakes. Now, I love the crispy topping of casseroles. Sometimes that's my favorite part of casseroles. So I'm gonna be using an extra amount of cornflakes. All right, so this is about a one cup measure. Ah. I'm gonna put these into a Ziploc bag. There's one cup, three cups, I think I could probably add one more. Let's do one more. Okay, so I'm gonna use four cups of cornflakes. That sounds like a good amount to me. I'm going to zip this up here. Now I'm gonna crush these, but I don't want to like pulverize them. I don't want cornflake powder. Um, just a little bit of break, breaking them up. I'm gonna let some of this air out of the bag so I don't have a breaking. So very gently, I'm gonna break up my cornflakes. Okay, so before I put these on my casserole, I'm gonna toss in some melted butter. So I'm gonna be using salted butter because that's what I have on hand. So I'm going to top off about three tablespoons of this and microwave it. All right, my butter is all melted, but it's not super hot. I don't wanna melt my bag. I'm gonna dump it in here. So now I'm going to dump this on top of my casserole and then stick it in the oven for about one hour. I am gonna keep checking on it though because burnt cornflakes are not tasty at all. So don't burn your cornflakes. All right, I'm gonna spread that out. Oh yeah, this is gonna be extra crispy. Okay, into the oven. I can't wait to show you how it turns out. All right, here they are, straight from the oven. The top is nice and golden brown and crispy still. This took about one hour. So while that cools down, I'll give you some ideas on how you can make this recipe your own. 
I think if you liked spicy food, you could try using some pepper jack cheese instead of cheddar cheese. That would be delicious. It would be yummy with some crumbled up bacon in there, some pre-cooked bacon, sausage. You could add so much to this to make it your own recipe. All right, let's dig in. I think it's cooled down enough, I can give it a try. It's good. It's not too salty. I can taste the onion, but I don't have big chunks of onion. It's good, the potatoes are cooked through. The topping is super crunchy. And you know what, With even with all that cheese in there, it's not too cheesy. It's just right. So I would definitely be making this on Christmas. I think the only thing I might change is I might chop up some rosemary and herbs and put it in there. I think that would really enhance the flavor. Also, I think I could totally mix up the uh, potato part and put it in the casserole dish the day before, like maybe on Christmas Eve, and then on Christmas Day, just crunch up the cornflakes, put them on top, and then bake it off then. That way I wouldn't have to be in the kitchen as much on Christmas Day. So part of it's make ahead. So there you have it. There's my version of funeral potatoes. Let me know in the comments down below what you're having for dinner tonight. Also, if you make funeral potatoes, what do you do differently? I'm always interested to find out how people make this recipe different. I hope your Wednesday is fantastic. Thanks for watching. See you next time.